What up, guys? I'm just here with my beautiful wife. Look at you. Girl, you so pretty. Okay, we're going to go look at a damn house. This house has the potential to be an amazing Airbnb, so we're going to take a look at it, but it needs a lot of work, I believe. All right, this the road is, huh? That's how you know you're going to the water. I'm going near the water. The house is on the water, just so y'all know. The house is on the water. Oh, there it is, that pink house. Somebody else is looking at it, so somebody going to buy that thing. Yeah, there's a lot of people here. We ain't going to get this house. Wait, you're so dumb. <laughs> Look at that one. That's nice, yeah. I like it. Got the modern look. All right, guys, it's the house. Let's take a look. This is gonna be like a thousand dollars of work, probably. Windows. I think we paid like 300 bucks, 350 bucks per windows installed. This is a bigger one. These windows are old. We're gonna need new windows. I'm keeping this flooring. Definitely not keeping that. <laughs> so that's new carpet, fresh paint, new carpet. This is a room right here. Whoa. We'll do tile down here, common area. But this is nice. Look at the high ceiling. That could be a problem, guys. Now we got some drywall stuff to fix, a leak and drywall to fix. Probably roof. Probably roof as well. Oh yeah, definitely roof. Look over there. So roof is another six, seven grand with our guys. I'm saying ten thousand dollars, and we just walked in. Windows all the way around. It's water damage. That's what I'm saying. Water damage, right? Water damage. Yeah. Some mold there. Oh no, this would work. We're already at 20 grand, guys. This is just paint, keep the floor. It's beautiful on the water. We can't walk on this deck. It means definitely some problems here, but we've had decks fixed. We had an ugly deck at the last Airbnb we bought. So I know this is probably a thousand to fix. Why build a deck like this and not a dock? Can you build a dock here? Probably, right? A small one? I mean, everybody else is going. Yeah, so this is nice. Bedroom with its own little area. It looks like they put some work into it. They tried. So this is nice. This is done. You ain't got to work on that. This is done. It looks like they tried to put some work into the property. All right. So this is the laundry room, a half bath. So we're talking one bedroom, two, three bedrooms. Look at this door, guys. What in the world were they thinking? This is gold, guys. And people don't take care of this. It's incredible. All right. We still got to go upstairs here. <laughs> what are the wowzers? This, honestly, we ain't going to do nothing with this. Big garage. We would just lock this room up. <laughs> and now we're going upstairs, guys. We gotta paint the whole house, another five grand. Another like 35, probably 40 at this point. I'm scared what's under this rug because it doesn't feel good. Oh yeah, this is the master. This is nice. A honeymoon suite type of vibe. You can make this an interesting Airbnb, like cool. Have some kayaks. Some jealousy windows. Yeah, it doesn't need a lot of work. It doesn't need a lot of work. It needs like $50,000 in work. All right, so a lot of dry rot here. Look at the bird. That's a good sign. Having that ladder there is a good sign that it's a deep canal. You can put a nice sized boat here. And this is a probate home, guys. So that means, you know, somebody passed away, family's going through probate or whatever. They probably don't want it. You don't know if before oh, that family member passed away or whatever, they were starting to put some money into the property. So it's gas. Yeah, that's from the fireplace. Definitely a lot of work. I want to have some talk, some conversation with you guys. Tell you guys a little bit about why it is that I look for houses, that I look for, for Airbnbs. The majority of why I do it is because we're trying to diversify our portfolio. A lot of you guys are cutting hair, you own a barbershop, and that's your only stream of income. And when you think of another stream of income, you guys don't really think of passive income. You don't think of investments. When I conversate with a lot of guys, a lot of times it's a second hustle, a second job. It's still trading time for money. And to me, that's not diversification. First off, when you have multiple things going on, they do cannibalize each other. You might be able to scale one thing to let's say $200,000 a year. But because you're doing too many things, your first thing might not ever surpass 70,000 a year. And then you input the second thing and that might get to 30K a year, 40K a year, because you're doing both things without all of your resources and your mental capacity. And so they do cannibalize each other. And then you add a third thing and now you add 120, 130, 140K and you're happy when you could have just focused on one thing, made 200K. Then once that thing was making 200K, let your money work for you. Focus on things that are more passive. Maybe you don't get as much a return as you would um, with the other strategy, but you don't need as much return because you're making plenty of money now. You have plenty of cash flow to continue to invest. And if that second thing requires you to put 100 grand in to make 30,000 a year, which is phenomenal, I mean, if you could do that, for most people, they're happy making 10,000 extra a year, 20,000 extra a year. And if you're doing that consistently every year, you go from 200 to 220, from 220 to 240, 240 to 300, because now you're snowballing, right? Before you know it, you're making half a million dollars a year. You continue to do that. Like these are the things that people don't quite understand 
and it's it's hard i get it it's hard in the beginning to be disciplined and just focus on one thing because you feel like you're not doing enough you see all these people on instagram with multiple streams of income and the average millionaire has seven streams of income it's not true it's bullshit the average person on forbes focused on one thing that scaled real estate scales barbershops can scale most of you guys don't run a scalable barbershop system and obviously cutting hair behind the chair does not scale but that's not the purpose of cutting behind the chair you found something you're passionate about that you can make good money doing it's flexible and it's the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey if you treat it that way but it's not supposed to be the end of the road people say all the time you know yeah but barbers don't get benefits we do we can get 401ks we can get self-directed iras we can do hsa plans and invest in that of course you can and depending on how you structure it sometimes you, it's a write-off as well just like it would be for a business and the same thing with insurances the life insurance policies the key man insurance policies health insurances you can get some really good deals and it's just part of your budget even if you were an employee with benefits for the most part if you're not doing more than your w-2 then you're going to be on the retire at 60 plan which I'm not knocking but if that's not the plan you want then you are driving on the wrong road you're going the wrong direction but the problem is that most people don't know their destination they don't know what it looks like and they don't know what they're working towards you might have an hour to get to your destination but some of you guys only driving 30 miles per hour you're never going to get there on time you have to be going the appropriate speed in order to get to your destination when you want to get there but if you don't know where your destination is you don't know how far you got to go you don't know how fast you got to go and trust me it's a lot further than you guys think so I did this on Instagram live. If you're not following me on Instagram live, you should, because every now and then, you know, we do stuff like this. But I just want to go through something with you guys and an exercise. Right. And so what I usually ask people is, man, what's your what's your dream life? And don't give me the oh, I'll be happy with this. You know, you got one life and there's nothing wrong with wanting more, guys. Even if you don't want a lot of house, there's got to be something you splurge on. There's got to be some type of selfish endeavor that you want to fund man even people who think it's wrong to want abundance there's a whole perspective where you can say they're guilty because damn you're you know you're only thinking about having enough for yourself but there's going to be people that depend on you one day or there's going to pe be people that need to depend on you and you're not going to be able to provide because you only thought about what what you needed right so there's always going to be some way of hating somebody to be selfish for me i don't like a huge house because it's we don't use much of the space and i'm not planning on being home often anyways i'm not like we're homebodies but we're like cozy homebodies and we like to travel a lot i, I do want a house on the water and something like that's going to be a million and a half plus in tampa okay i'm gonna assume you know i got i got really good credit my payments are gonna be about ten thousand dollars a month all right i know that sounds crazy but I'm grateful, but you got to push the limits. You got one life. All right, $10,000 a month, car payments. I'm happy with the cars I already have, but I would like to add like a weekend crazy car. So I'm going to put $5,000 in car payments. Uh, oh, but what about, why are you financing stuff? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with leveraging other people's money. I understand all the arguments, pros and the cons. I like taking on debt. I'm okay with that. I want to travel a lot. So I'm going to put $1,000 a month just for travel. I want my kids to have the option of going to private school. You know, we might move into an area that has a great zip code with great schools, but for now I'm gonna assume about $4,000 a month in private school. I'm just gonna put miscellaneous stuff. I'm gonna be honest, eating out, insurances, clothes, stuff like that. I'm gonna put another 10 grand a month. I know that sounds crazy, but this is an abundance lifestyle. I would go abundance and then start you know, lowering it from there if it seems extreme to you right you might do this list and then say you know what i'm okay with just two cars let's mark that down to 3k i gotta put a boat if i'm gonna have a house on the water so i'm gonna have a really nice boat and i'm gonna put four grand a month for the boat maintenance and everything right we're at thirty-four thousand dollars a month is the lifestyle right but you gotta pay taxes i'm pretty savvy with my taxes especially if bonus depreciation is a thing and i can do cost segregation with self-managed airbnbs the first year accelerate that depreciation this is tax talk i'm not a, a, an accountant but at pi accounting we know all this stuff so if you're a barber or a professional in the beauty industry and you need a good accounting firm we are here i'm gonna say 20 percent for taxes i think it'll be a lot less if i continue doing the strategy that i'm doing but we're gonna put 20 percent just to be conservative about seven thousand a month just in taxes so we're at 41k what about savings? Don't you guys want to save every month? Save a bunch of money every month? I do. I want to save a lot of money every month. I want to save at least 20% of my money every single month. So you're looking at about 
eight thousand dollars extra a month we're gonna put in even 50k a month is the lifestyle the dream lifestyle i'm working towards that includes lifestyle that includes taxes that includes savings what would savings be if we already have this income passively it's just building a diversified portfolio of some liquid capital that earns interest and assets that earn cash flow passively 50k a month damn how do we get there that's not happening with barbering guys i mean it, it can be it, it it's i know it's been done before but it's not duplicatable <laughs> the slowest way to get to this point is the same way that we've been taught in school that my w2 people no knock to you guys their way of doing it is the slowest way and what that would mean is you would invest in a retirement account hopefully it snowballs and it earns compound interest over a long period of time 30 40 50 years and turns into a huge nest egg of which your entire life you've lived way below your means so in order to make let's say let's say you were making 100k your whole life when you retire you want to at least make eighty thousand dollars a year throughout your whole life and so you have to expect to make anywhere from four to six percent on that money so we're going to put five percent as average on that money every year hoping that it creates eighty thousand dollars in passive income every year so what would that mean that would mean you would need 1.6 million dollars in your retirement account earning five percent interest every year in order to make eighty thousand dollars a year without it affecting your capital could you pull more than that of course you can because you're not going to need 1.6 million dollars the rest of your life right but that's what it looks like do you know how long it's going to take you to earn that you know making 100k a year saving 10 20 percent of it throughout your whole life it's going to take 40 50 years with this plan you're never going to get here in order to get here how much would you need to make at five percent 50k a month is 600,000. Guys, you would need $12 million in your bank account earning 5% interest to make the $600,000 a year that you need to live that lifestyle. Not only do you have to earn an extremely high income your whole life, you have to save a bunch of it and hope that it grows into this by the time you're 65. You're not gonna need 600,000 a year if you're 65 retiring. You know, you're gonna be worried more about medical stuff and staying healthy than anything right so what's the alternative this is why i was talking about i'm not afraid of debt the only way to get to this in your lifetime where you can enjoy it is with leverage leveraging debt in the mentorship program in order to make six hundred thousand dollars a year net passively that would equate to about nine to ten barbershops nine to ten barbershops is what that would equate to you could do it with way less right you could do it with with less barbershops you might be able to do it with seven or eight with our business model right with seven or eight passive net actually you might be able to do it with six six to eight passive and net i can personally tell you we have six shops and we do about four hundred thousand net is what the numbers work out to be we're working on a seventh shop that's going to have about 14 to 16 shares if that happens that shop could push us above 600,000 with uh seven barbershops it'll it'll push us to probably yeah about 600,000 with seven locations so it's doable with our system that's one option another option is with real estate i personally had a house under contract last year at the end of the year for 1.25 million dollars the gross income on this house about 225,000 the NOI the net operating income after expenses I know you guys may not understand this language it's okay you can google some of it but just follow along with me right was about 180k so that means we buy this property for 1.25 million after expenses management fees all that stuff it was bringing in net operating income $180,000 a year Okay. You're going to put debt on this house because, again, we're using leverage. You're not going to make all of this because now we got to subtract the debt service. The debt service on this property was going to be about $7,000 a month because we put 30% down or 25% down. So at $7,000 a month, the debt service, you're looking at 84 k in debt service, which still cleared $96,000 in profit after taxes, insurance, debt service. All these expenses 96k is what this would net every single year cash on cash it, it costs us about three hundred thousand dollars to get into this property so that's a hell of a cash on cash investment that's about a what 33 percent cash on cash return so we had to put 300 grand in 
to get 96k a month profit you have debt on this property but i would take that debt if i'm clearing 96k a, a year right on a three hundred thousand dollar investment it's a hell of a return because we used debt if we use this strategy guys and this is stuff that i teach in my mentorship do you know how long it would take us to get this 96k a year i just showed you 1.6 million saved in the bank liquid would only get you 80. <laughs> okay so you're going to need at least two million dollars in a retirement account collecting five percent at least it's not going to happen every year but you're getting that 96k with a three hundred thousand dollar investment now how do you get that 300k you have to make a bunch of money guys you got to make good money as a barber i don't care how much you charge per haircut you need to make money i, I care about what, what you see on your tax return because you're going to use those tax returns to, to get approved for these properties you're going to need good credit to get approved for these properties you're going to need decent cash flow to get approved for these properties you're going to need experience to get approved for these properties you have to leverage somebody's experience but if you were to do this play okay you would need how many houses about six houses about six of these airbnbs to get this dream lifestyle now i showed you two different options okay could you mix these assets of course so if i'm able to do to hit this number with seven barbershops and let's say we go with just opening four or three barbershops let's let's go with three barbershops right we go with four houses we end up with four houses and i can do each of those every year if i make enough money or I can do one a barbershop every year and an Airbnb every two to three years. Now there's way more strategies here. You can actually do it faster because if these houses end up appreciating or you have some equity, you can pull money from these houses to buy your next one. There's all kinds of strategies here, but the goal would be, okay, this is my destination. Now, what speed do I need to run at? What strategy do I need to use to go at that speed? And so I might say to myself, it's easier for me to open barbershops and I know I can get, I can do four. If I can't open four, can I open two and buy two? There's going to be two in the area anyways. So I might be able to do that to get to that three or four number. And the Airbnbs, I can do house hacking to get to, to the four Airbnbs. Or I might not be able to come with 300K cash, but can I borrow it and pay it back with the cash flow of these properties until it's paid off? maybe right you got to be careful you got to be savvy you got to know what you're doing this isn't for everybody i get it that's why majority of people don't do this it requires you to be active okay it requires you to be proactive and be educating yourself and have the right people around you in your corner now those are two options another one could be purchasing a business that's already operating plenty of marketplaces out there that have businesses that are already operating businesses that anybody can run and i always bring up a smoothie shop but let's say you see a coffee shop that's for sale i don't know five hundred thousand dollars it's already got management in place it already has employees and it's making about a hundred thousand dollars a year this is noi you could put a hundred thousand dollars down or if you do like a sba loan if you know about sba loans can't get an sba loan without tax returns without some money saved without good credit can't do it we help all of our clients do that in Pia County. We'll help you with your budget to get you a, a buffer in your bank account so you have some money saved. We help you with credit repair. Even if you go from a 720 to a 800 or a 780, that's huge. That can save you thousands of dollars a year in financing. And we help you with your tax returns and tax strategy, saving as much money on your taxes so you can keep as much as possible because that capital is important while still being bankable, still being able to be approved for this SBA loan. And we work with bankers as well. We have resources for that. But let's say you're going to go with an SBA loan. Now you only need 50K down to get 500 grand plus all your documents, right? 50K cash on cash return is 200%, guys. It's 200%. But you're going to have debt. So let's say this debt is going to cost you, but let's say it costs you 50K a year to service the debt. Obviously, this is going to get paid off, right, at some point. So it's not going to be forever. Let's assume this is a 10 year term. In 10 years, this debt will be paid off. And now you're clearing 100K a year. But let's just say you're going to leverage, use debt because it's only going to cost you 50K to earn 50K. That's a hundred percent return on your investment. That's a lot better than five percent, guys. And it's already managed. All that, all that, all that good stuff. It will cannibalize some of your barbering time. So this is why it's important to have build that diversification first. I would go with some real estate, some barbershops first, then maybe tap into this, or continue to expand your shops if there's enough market in your area. But this is again another option. So you might mix in three of these type of businesses let's say you do one that's a million 
and it ends up earning you 100K a year. But obviously this is easier because it's, it's 50K or whatever. But if you got 100K cash, now you can do a million dollar business that earns you 100K after debt service, right? So let's say you do the 100K after debt service, two of those, two of the Airbnbs, and two or three of the barbershops that I'm talking about. You hit your number now. Now you're making that 50K a month you need for that lifestyle. And that includes $10,000 a month in savings. So you're still building up a retirement account. You're still building up this plan, this retirement account plan. It also includes your taxes. So that 20% on taxes. And guess what? If you keep buying assets, you can depreciate them and it lowers your taxable income, but keeps you bankable. You're really not going to be paying 20% if you have a good accounting team, which you can get at PyAccounting.com. Schedule a consultation with us today. And all of this is possible much, much faster because you're talking about 50K at a time, 100K at a time. Those are three options of assets that you can do, but there's more. Now you can do real estate syndication deals. It's not going to be as great of an investment, but maybe that's a fourth option because you're also trying to be diversified. But I would try to stay away from the get rich quick stuff. I would try to stay away from day trading. That's not investing. That's a job. Forex, that's a job. Focus on the main thing, barbering. Get some good guidance, have a good team, and you can do a much faster plan like I'm showing you guys here. This is what we teach in the mentorship. This is why Pi Accounting was born because I was teaching all this stuff to the mentorship groups. The next step for them was to find a good accounting firm that knew all this stuff and that cared about their goals and stuff, and they just couldn't find them. And the best analogy that I can give you guys when it comes to the accounting world and how they see barbers, accountants see barbers the same way that barbers see kids. You see all them kids that all them barbers that don't want to take kids no more, or I'm not giving a discount anymore for the kids, right? But why is that? Because kids are a pain in the ass. They're way more work with less pay. The parents don't appreciate you because they don't understand how much goes into cutting hair, and they want to give they want a kid with a blurry fade that's crying and moving all over the place. Guess what? That's how accountants see barbers. They're complaining and crying all the time. They don't understand the work that goes in, in into this. They don't understand how impactful, how powerful this is for their life. And they don't do the work that the accounts are asking them to do. Stop moving. You're moving too much. All right, you know, I'm going to mess up your lineup. Guess what? What do you guys do? Stop spending so much. What, what do you guys do? You go buy Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Jordans and stuff. Stupid stuff. Go buy a, a nice car. You can't even afford it. You think you can because... You make more money than all your peers, but you can't. And then you don't appreciate the work that's being done. And you guys don't pay well. $335 a month, everybody thinks it's so expensive. It's like that parent that thinks a $25 kid's cut's expensive. Most accountants want high ticket clients, just like most barber barbers want high ticket clients. Most accountants want guys that are paying $4,000 a month, $5,000 a month with businesses that, guess what, take almost the same amount of time uh, to work on for an accountant than it does for a barber. What's that sound like? A blurry fade on a adult actually takes probably less time because an adult, listen, and they appreciate a, a blurry fade a lot more. All right, that's the last point that I got for you guys. And uh, hopefully this video was, was good to you guys. Yeah, if you're interested in the mentorship, there's a link below, schedule a call with us. It's not a sales call, we just make sure that's the right fit for both of us. If you're interested in Pi Accounting, you can schedule a call with Pi Accounting as well. There's a link below. Thanks guys.